Hello and welcome to another edition of this. Today's video is going to be a fairly short one because I don't have a great deal to talk about. I mean, I don't want to blow my own trumpet and say that last week drained all of my creativity, but that was a lot of fucking work, man. And all the while, Banderas will be watching you. First of all, I want to talk about a bit of a feud that's developed between us and the cleaners on the subject of post-its of all fucking things. You see, me and Hugh have a bit of a penchant for, like, putting post-its on each other's doors just to give us, like, little messages and a little bit of correspondence between us that isn't face-to-face. -face. And every time we put them up, the cleaners take them down for no discernible reason. And as much as I love my corridor distance relationship being disrupted by cleaners, this just isn't on. And when I say it's not on, I mean they are just doing their job and we should probably be thanking them for it. But that does not change the fact that when you're writing haikus for a door on a post-it, you want it to remain there for the rest of eternity. Moving on from my haiku-based rage, we did a little project last night because we were a bit bored and it was 1 o'clock in the morning and... Circumstances were in our favour. For those of you who don't know, by which I mean Gav... Well actually, and, and Dylan and David now. So the three of you that don't know, to get into Crombie Hall you need two keys. One to get in the floor and the second to actually get into your door. Now, when you have two keys to get into one room, it's easy to sort of bring yourself into a false sense of security because pretty much no one can get on the floor in the first place unless they have the key. And since you have amazing neighbours like us, I mean, you don't have to worry or anything, do you? However, me, Hugh and Tadeo still thought it was prudent to remind Tashana that she should probably lock her door on a regular basis. Our story begins at about, I'm going to say about half twelve maybe, when me and Hugh were in my room just chatting, relaxing, drinking some milk. When all of a sudden a drunken Tashana sort of wanders into my room and like collapses on my bed. Now I should probably point out that like my door was open, she didn't just burst in Kanye style like Andrew and Hugh, I'm gonna let you finish. But I'm the drunkest girl of all time. Of all time! And it quickly became apparent that she was in that stage of drunkenness where you don't really want to stay in one place for more than 8 seconds. So she was off pretty quickly. But through a convoluted series of circumstances that are quite hard to explain, we ended up finding out, by we I mean Tadeo, Hugh and me, that Tashana had left her door unlocked. Now, since this wasn't a horror film, we opened the door without trepidation and just looked at all our stuff for a minute and then we thought, well, now that we're in here and she's out, we may as well fuck with it. We stood there thinking about it for a while and then Hugh suggested that we move all the stuff that we could out of her room and into the hallway and set it up as it was in her room. We thought that this was in itself pretty amusing, but it also had a deep moral lesson. Lock your fucking door and never open it to anyone ever. So it took us about 15-20 minutes, but we ended up moving the mattress, her chairs, pretty much most of her stuff except for like her wardrobe and like sink which is attached. We ended up moving all of that out into the hall. I think it was a pretty cool endeavour and this is what we ended up with. See Okay, hey, what's your reaction to the to the Great Tashana massacre it of October? Me. It wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> it was grand. So we were finished and all we needed now was for Tashana to come back home and see what we'd done. So we waited a little while. It looked a little something like this. And eventually, of course, she showed up. Now, this is a video that Tadeo took on Tashana's camera, and it comes from her vlog, a link to which I will put down there. So all in all, I feel it was a great success on every front. I mean, she learned her lesson, we got a laugh, we got to put furniture in the hallway, which has always been a dream of mine. Yeah, I just realised that I said, like, towards the beginning, oh, this will be a short video today. Not that short, is it? Now, to film recommendations. Maybe not the most stunningly good reason to recommend a film, but I just started my French lectures and tutorials this week. And I realised how fucking long it's been since I studied French. Why did I leave you? 
Why did I leave you? So to commemorate me restarting the Elf French, I'm recommending my favourite French film, A Bout de Souffle or Breathless in English. You've probably heard me talk about it before in glowing terms and probably with cum on my hands, but it's just so good. I mean, Jean-Luc Godard is the best film he's ever made. I mean, he, he, he started off so good and he's ended up so fucking badly making stuff like Film Socialisme. And, but this, and but this, <laughs> but this is just a really, really fucking solid film and you should watch it if you can. So yeah, that's pretty much the end of the Elf video for this week, so I will see both of you very soon, I hope. And Nikki, I hope to see you in video form sooner rather than later, but obviously you can't for obvious reasons, obviously. And many times can one say obviously in one sentence.